Oh, why hello there! I'm Professor Gerding, and this is your psychology class. Or as I like to call it, the best damn class you'll ever take in your entire life. Do I actually mean that? Yes, I do! I think this is the most important, fun, epic class you'll ever have in your entire life. But you know what? I'm biased. You know why I'm biased? Well, because I love psychology. Why do I love psychology so much? Well, today in I Love Psychology, I like to think of this as like the episode zero, where I'm gonna talk about my own personal love for psychology and maybe you'll have a similar story that will blossom all on its own throughout watching these series of I Love Psychology videos. But for me, I think psychology is the best science. Well, think of it this way. Math is very important. We've come a long way because of mathematics. I use math all the time, but not every day. History. History is really important. You definitely don't want to repeat the mistakes of the past. You need to know where you came from, where we're going. I can't knock history, but do I use it every day? Oh no, God! But psychology? Every damn day. It's inescapable. It's all around you. Even if you just sit on your ass and you do nothing all day, you're still doing psychology. Why? Psychology is the scientific study of the mind and behavior. Science! Meaning you have to look at things empirically. Some people argue psychology is a soft science. <laughs> Depends on what aspect of psychology you're talking about. Because you have to realize psychology is huge. When you talk about human behavior and the mind, that's everything you can possibly see someone do. Whether you're running, if you're pooping, if you're hungry, thirsty, angry, horny, it doesn't matter. All of that falls under the science of psychology. But even if you're not doing anything, you're not doing any of those verbs, and you're just sitting there, you still got a lot going on in your noggin, and that is psychology. So there's so many different fields of psychology. There's health psychology, there's biological psychology, psychology of personality. What we're gonna talk about mostly is general psychology, which is why I love introductory psychology probably the most, because it's a virtual tour guide of all these different aspects of psychology where we spend just the right amount of time to keep you interested rather than getting into the nitty gritty detail. Sure, there's social psychology class where we really dive in to all of the aspects of social psychology and there's psychology of personality where we do the same, really get into the deep details. When it comes to general psychology, it's that tour guide. And when you go on a tour of Europe, you just see the best sights that they can show you. Oh, here's the Eiffel Tower. Here's the Venetian canals. Here's the Colosseum. You don't learn all the little aspects like, oh, here's Vinny. He's homeless. He's dying of cancer behind the street. I don't know why I'm using this accent when I'm talking about Vinny. So in general psychology, we only talk about the most interesting things. And these things we talk about are immediately relevant to your everyday life. I like to believe that every single time you learn something about psychology, you now have a tool in your toolbox that you can immediately use to improve your life. In fact, let me give you some generic example. If your life is in danger and you need others to assist you, what are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to scream? What are you supposed to yell? A lot of people would think you scream help. Oh my goodness, this person is trying to kill me. Help! That's not what you're supposed to yell. What are you supposed to yell? The answer is fire. Why? Because of psychology, that's why. Because when you yell fire, it's gonna get everybody's attention. They're going to look. If someone's screaming murder, heaven forbid, rape, or anything else that's awful, people don't know what they're supposed to do. Not everybody has a plan in their mind. What am I supposed to do if I see someone getting murdered in the street? The answer is you should probably call 911. But 
When it comes to fire, we all know for our own selfish reasons, we at the very least should look. We don't want to burn. I don't want to be burned alive. I better look at what that person's saying because what's on fire? Is that building on fire? Are they on fire? Am I on fire? So there's a little psychology tidbit right there is how do we get people to help us the most? And there's an entire chapter in Introductory Psychology all about helping and how we get people to help. It's incredible. And we really dive into that with social psychology. Woo! I can't wait. It's gonna be exciting. I love psychology because I can tell you my life is immediately better because of the lessons I learned in psychology. In fact, I love psychology so much. I dedicated my entire life to it. This is my career. What you see me doing right now is, <laughs> it's amazing. It's my job. I'm getting paid to do it. I can afford my mortgage because I'm teaching you right now. And that takes me back. So let me tell you the story of how I fell in love with psychology. My first psychology class was at Cuyahoga Community College. I went to community college because my parents said, there's no way that we're sending your dumb ass to a four year school because you almost failed out of high school, which is true. I, I, I had a lot of fun in high school, but man, am I glad they did. I was amazed at college classes at Cuyahoga Community College in Cleveland. Yes, born, raised Cleveland area, this guy. There I was. A freshman never had a psychology course before in my life and I'm sitting there in my introductory psychology course and pretty soon I realized oh my goodness I love what I am learning I'm looking forward to coming to class every day oh my goodness this is hilarious this is entertaining this is tear-provoking I'm crying in class I'm so engaged it was one of the first classes I ever truly look forward to going to. Kind of the same way I looked forward to watching Dragon Ball Z every day, I really couldn't let anything stop me from getting to my psychology class because I just wanted to learn. <laughs> so interesting. And the teacher, he was so good. He just sat there and told us stories of his own personal history and how they are applicable to the lessons of psychology. Right there and then, after about six weeks of taking my introductory psychology class, I said, oh my God, I want that man's job. Not that I wanted him fired and I wanted to replace him, but I wanted to be a psychology professor. In fact, I know I'm dating myself right now, but to really hammer home the idea that I was going to become a psychology professor, to make it a vow amongst vows, I went home and I made a new email account an AOL email account. Welcome. I called it Professor Psych at AOL.com. And I said, you know, when I become a psychology professor, I'm going to use this email address. It's kind of the equivalent of when you write yourself a check for a million dollars. One million dollars. One day, I'm going to be able to cash this check. <laughs> and guess what? Now I'm using that email address living the dream. That's right. I have a dream job. Life is amazing for me because I get to teach you even remotely here through these videos. I love it very much. So I got my associate's degree at Cuyahoga Community College. Then I transferred to Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland. And I talked my way into them accepting every single credit from Cuyahoga Community College. Now, knowing that, I was able to graduate in just two years from Case Western Reserve, magnum cum laude. Oh, this guy. I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. How much money did I save myself and my family by going to Cuyahoga Community College first and having an amazing education? The answer is in the six figures. Cha ching So you best believe that I love Cuyahoga Community College. In fact, after I graduated from Case Western Reserve University, I continued to pursue my psychology career and I went to East Carolina University in North Carolina. Somewhere along the line, I decided neuropsychology was what I was gonna do. That would be my jam. So I was working on my master's degree, learning some neuropsychology and clinical psychology with an adult focus. While I was there, I had to do an internship, and that's where I got most of my clinical experience 
yes, I did some work on campus, but I was a psychological intern at Eastern Correctional Facility in North Carolina. We're talking the equivalent of maximum security prison. Most of my clients have been murderous, rapists, a surprising amount of pedophiles, a lot of lifers, a lot of prisoners. They're going nowhere. That's their home. And I have stories to last a lifetime, and I'm really glad I did that. But while I was there, the prisoners reminded me something. Maybe you've heard this expression before. We're all prisoners. It's just that the prisoners can see the bars. This idea that we kind of imprison ourselves into routine or leading a miserable life. Because the prisoners, they kept on asking me when they'd come in, the main thing they want to know is, hey, what's going on in the outside world? And I had to tell them, I don't know. I'm in here with you. There were many days where I literally never saw the sunlight because I went to work so early that the sun hadn't risen. And by the time I left, the sun had already set and I'm literally in prison. So there weren't any windows where I could see outside or anything like that. <laughs> and this, I shouldn't waste your time with this, but it would stink if you forgot something in the prison. Like if I forgot my car keys, it would take a full 20 minutes to get from my office to the outside, not because it was such a long walk, but because of all the security checks and gates that I have to go through. Hey, it's me. There's no prisoners behind me. There's no shiv at my neck. We're good to go. And the guards would have to close the one door, open the other like an airlock system. And so when I get into the parking lot without my keys, damn it, because I'd have to take 20 minutes back. But anyways, the prisoners taught me, hey, your life is more boring than ours and we're prisoners. And it reminded me, why am I even doing this? Why am I in grad school? What I, that's right, I just want to teach. I want to get in front of the classroom. So I went to California for a year, worked there to kind of spread my wings. California. California is California. California. The state of California. That was fun, but my heart was always where I was born and raised and that's Cleveland, Cuyahoga Community College. Try to see, go tops. So I went back to Tri-C and they didn't have any job openings, but I asked. I, I asked a former professor of mine, a professor whom I really respected, and I took every single one of her classes I could, Dr. Nala Harik Williams. And I said, hey, you know, uh, I would really like to teach a class, but I don't know where there's job openings. You're an amazing teacher. I'm just asking you for advice. And this is what she said. She said, I remember you. You were amazing in class as a student. You did amazing with class presentations. You can have one of my classes. Meaning she basically took money out of her pocket and gave it to me because she was scheduled to teach this class and she gave me one of her classes off of her own roster. And that was my foot in the door where I started teaching adjunct for about eight years until they gave me full-time faculty member. And here I am today, living the dream, teaching psychology, took that guy's job. Now I'm the teacher at Cuyahoga Community College, living the dream, sharing my love for psychology to all of you. So I wish, I wish you all, if you're watching this, the love of psychology that I have, even if it's just a portion of it, because the love for psychology in reality, it's the love of life. <laughs> anyway, I'm rambling. What about you? Do you have a love for psychology? Are you getting excited about this class as I was getting excited about my psychology class? What's going on with you? I want to know. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. I'm looking forward to teaching you through these videos. I don't know how to end this video, so I'll just end it with the classic tagline. I love psychology.